The father of a 21-year-old Georgia woman told cameras yesterday he texted R. Kelly to let my daughter free as another woman who says she lived at one of his properties also spoke out saying she had always defended the music superstar until she got behind closed doors. My daughter is severely brainwashed. The parents of one of those women coming forward in a press conference Monday, they claim they met the famous singer and producer in 2015, Kelly offering to help their then 19-year-old daughter break into the business. But they say once she started spending time alone with him, she changed, not seeing them since December of 2016 and only communicating in a few short texts. My daughter is being held against her will. She's brainwashed to the point where um, she says anything that he asks her to say. Timothy and John Jalen Savage filing this December 2016 police report in Georgia obtained by ABC News saying they believe their daughter is a part of the R. Kelly cult and that she is stuck and in trouble. Hello and welcome to Real Crime Profile. This is your host Jim Clementi, former New York City prosecutor and retired FBI profiler and writer-producer on CBS's Criminal Minds. And with me today from London is... Laura Richards, um, analyst, advocate, and founder and director of Paladin National Stalking Advocacy Service. And I'm Lisa Zambetti. I'm the casting director for Criminal Minds, where Jim Clementi is my colleague. Today we're going to be talking about a insidious crime that has been going on for over a decade that we know about, probably more. And the basis of it is an arcane set of laws. You want to tell us about that, Laura? Yeah, well, reading about some of the laws here, it says that parties in California, Colorado, Kentucky, Louisiana, and Texas may get married at any age with parental consent. And in Kentucky, the consent of a judge may also be needed. And in Texas, marriage is not allowed until under the age of 14 for males and 13 for females. So although the rules do vary from state to state, um, you can get married with parental consent when when you're much younger than certainly than in the UK, which um, obviously the case that we're going to talk about in particular, this has very serious repercussions and is the reason why this person's been getting away with it for, I think it's actually almost uh, two decades, Jim C., depending on when you go from in terms of, you know, who discloses first. Yeah, I agree. There has been a lot of progress in general about laws protecting children, except in the area of marriage. So if someone uses the marital laws to get access to underage kids, they can basically avoid prosecution. And I think, as you said, that's the reason why this particular asshole criminal is getting away with his crimes. I was just going to say, or they can groom the parents as well, which we see, you know, we've been talking about shows and institutions where adults, uh, you know, numerous adults, uh, use child sexual exploitation and different tools and tactics on children. But there's also those predators who groom and manipulate uh, the parents as well. So if parents' consent is the key thing uh, and around, you know, state to state, therefore they can always get into the parents and brainwash them into thinking that they're a great individual. And of course, this is somebody who has done that too. So it's really very concerning, and particularly when we see that affluence and influence seems to play, again, a key part in allowing this person to have gotten away with it for so long. It's just unbelievable when you look at how many times girls and women have made disclosures about him. Yeah, so as a resident of California almost my whole life, this really shocked me because I knew, we all know that it's illegal to, it's statutory rape to have sex with anyone under the age of 18. However, if your parent is consenting to a marriage, you could, there would be no minimum age in California that you couldn't marry. You could marry an 11 year old, you could marry a 10 year old. That means you can be having sex legally. Am I right, Jim? Yes. With a 10 year old, if the parents are consenting to a marriage. And the only reason I even know about this is because last month, State Senator Jerry Hill was seeking to amend that California marriage law to close that loophole. And I had no idea that there was such a blue law, as you call it, on the books until this 
senator came forward to try to close that loophole. And this is all going to lead into our conversation that has made headlines this week um, about the singer, entertainer, R. Kelly. And the biggest problem that I have is people supporting just because someone is a celebrity, people supporting this kind of behavior, this kind of behavior that is clearly a textbook case of coercive control, a textbook case of someone taking advantage of people because they want to be close to a star or because they want to become a star, and they will basically demean themselves and be put in a position where they are completely controlled, their entire life, their entire behavior, and they're used sexually and otherwise. It's just reprehensible. It is. And like you say, Jim C, this is coercive control. This other people call it a cult in inverted commas, but actually this is exactly what coercive control looks like. It's uh, an indoctrination, a brainwashing, a limiting of somebody's space and actions. It's about somebody micromanaging another person and closing down their options. And of course, uh, Robert Kelly has done that to many girls and women. And like you said, you know, he basically bases it on the things that they need and want. And so he will give them, you know, attention and give them, take their mobile phone from them and give them a mobile phone with one number on it and with numbers that he agrees that people can call and controls what they wear and what they eat and having sex with him. And this is multiple girls and women at, at any one time. And these young girls and women have been targeted by him, targeted using his fame and his uh, status and his standing. And, you know, this is absolutely about coercive control, this brainwashing aspect where an ex-girlfriend talked about how controlling and manipulative he was. And the control is absolute. He doesn't need to he doesn't need to use violence here or threats because he's got these girls and women completely where he wants them. So, and you know, a number of these accusations and allegations, they've been called sexual misconduct, haven't they? Um, which I also think is quite interesting. And, you know, the terminology, again, has come up around child pornography, you know, where there is video images of him having sex um, with young girls, with underage girls. And, I mean, in the UK, we don't call it that. We call it child sexual abuse images or videos because a child cannot consent. And that is still 100% my view that a child cannot consent. And, you know, I'm equally as astounded by the California law around around marriage and that you can, with parental consent, get married and therefore have what we would call unlawful sexual intercourse. Child abuse uh, gets legitimized, which is really, really terrifying. One of the things that angers me the most is the people who have enabled him to continue this behavior. And he actually, what is reported um, by Jim Rogatis and, and others is that R. Kelly actually goes back to his old high school and, where he did not graduate, but where he went to school. And one of his teachers who teaches choir, you know, would invite him to see the girls in the choir sing. And he could basically handpick any of those girls and contact them later and encourage them to drop out of school and come live with him so that he could support their careers. And, and this choir teacher is aware of his background, but, you know, he He's obviously so supportive of the school and he, you know, maybe he's got her convinced that he's not a bad guy, but she basically is is almost pimping for him. That's outrageous. I mean, that's just like the, the what we're talking about in The Keepers. I mean, we're, we're an organization that's meant to protect these children is actually assisting in their victimization. Handing them on a plate, just like with Jimmy Savile, where he would go into the hospitals and those in the hospitals knew that he was spending time with some of the child patients. I mean, it is just, you know, I get a visceral reaction to it. And certainly when you read through how many out of court settlements there have been with young girls who, you know, have all said very similar things. Tiffany Hawkins sued him. And she was at the age of 15 and there was an out of court settlement and Tracy Sampson sex. There was underage sex and that was settled out of court. Patrice Jones, she sued him and he she was pregnant by him and there was a settlement out of court. Montina Woods also sued him. There were tapes and because apparently he records everything according to, to many of these girls and women. And there, so there were tapes in that case and there was a settlement out of court. So 
these are things that are known, right? This has been known for 20 years. And I agree with you, Lisa. Why are all these artists collaborating with him? Why is Justin Bieber, Kanye West, Lady Gaga, why are record labels still signing him? Why are people still buying his music? Why hasn't this been all over the newspapers in this way before? Why is it two decades on? Well, I think the fact that he was not convicted the one time he was actually brought to trial. Because for, didn't he? They weren't allowed. The jury was not allowed to hear all of this, uh, you know, supported supporting um, information about his behavior. And so he was not convicted of child pornography, um, to use our term, Laura. And so maybe that makes people think, well, you know, if the, he couldn't be convicted, it gives them dispensation to collaborate with him. I, you know, I don't know what, what protects him so long. But yeah, as, as recently as last year, he was singing freaking Christmas carols with Jimmy Fallon on his show. And I think that that's just horrible. Yeah, well, I think we should start a campaign to just boycott anybody who promotes him or works with him. I think that it's demanded by anybody who gives a damn about about children's rights and about women's rights. He's clearly coercively controlling these girls and these young ladies, and he's using his position of power to do it, and it's it's disgusting, reprehensible. I think in the case from 2001, it was clear that he made child pornography. I think that what happened in the end was that he paid off the family of the victim, and I don't think she was cooperative through the trial, and I think that's why he was acquitted. Um, that's just from my memory. I could be wrong, but I recall it falling apart in some way like that. Um, I had an encounter with R. Kelly, and I lived with him at another location that's not far from here. I've uh, participated and witnessed a lot of acts that I did not agree with, and the way he manipulates each and every woman that comes around. I'm blessed to have a strong will mind and the things that I've witnessed. I have a 17-year-old daughter myself, and I always thought this to be my daughter. And somehow he's learned the power of marriage because in 1994, he married then his 15-year-old protege, Aaliyah, against her parents' wishes. They didn't even know that she was getting married to him. And once they did find out, you know, they had it annulled. But somehow he knows that that gives him, you know, financial control over them. And, and basically, as we've seen, it's so hard for a woman to come forward about de domestic abuse claims, you know, against her husband. And so he must feel like marriage is somehow a An safe haven for him. Right. Yeah. Well, she was 15, wasn't she? This is 1994, right. but claimed on the certificate that she was 18. And you know what? He then wrote and produced a song for her called Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. Yeah. yeah. What do you make of that? I mean... It's rationalization. Yeah, it's rationalization. Um, it's sort of like uh, Pete Townsend writing the uh, the scene in, in Tommy uh, called... Uh, Uncle Ernie, where Uncle Ernie takes little Tommy, who was probably eight or ten years old at the time, into the bathroom, takes off his clothes, runs the bath, and sings a song called Diddle About. I mean, why would he do that? Why would anybody put that in a rock opera? Well, what if you want to cover the fact that you are sexually interested in children? What if you want to cover the fact and get it sort of rationalize the behavior and say, hey, it's not so bad. Everybody will love this rock opera, so they're tacitly approving of this scene. Um, and I think later, when he was caught actually purchasing child pornography online, he actually was made to register as a sex offender. Um, R. Kelly should be a registered sex offender as well. And I think if enough women come forward, this will be a Bill Cosby-type situation. I think he's got probably just as many women and kids that he has coerced and manipulated and taken advantage of and sexually abused. And that that I think this could actually create a groundswell of support for these victims and away from anybody who actually engages with him on a professional level because it's disgusting what he's done. Well, it should be the tipping point. I mean, his spokesperson said that he has a crew of adults. I, I was just reading through the statements because they're mm -hmm. very carefully worded. Crew of adults, that he's an upstanding human being. And the, the last part, he takes care of people in his life. Yeah. 
you know, that kind of quid pro quo. Well, that's certainly not what we're seeing. And, you know, I agree with you for people to come forward and stand together, that safety in numbers, because it's very clear that there are multiple people here, multiple girls and women. I mean, there's at least five to six who have come forward. And, you know, who is this guy? It's like the Pied Piper has been getting away with this for so long. Is it because all the girls and women are black, you know, that no one seems to care? And why is it that none of those who have been asked, like Kanye West and Justin Bieber and Lady Gaga, why are they non? Why are they not answering? You know, we're asking whether they're going to collaborate with him again. It should be a very clear no. Close down his behavior. He needs to be shut down. Full yeah. stop. Yeah. And let's talk about the coercive control, Laura, because these are some of the things that that a uh, one of the women who happened to be a white woman who was tw- twenty or early twenties, and she she got in engaged with him sexually and otherwise and this is what she said she said they were not allowed to compliment compliment each other the the girls that are in his little harem about themselves or their clothing they had to look down when they were in public they could only compliment shoes and nails of other other girls they were not allowed to make calls except to him they had to knock three times on the door and get permission to enter any any room or leave any room there would be punishment if they didn't follow the rules they were made to to perform in porn tapes they had to they they were made to have sex with each other and if they weren't actually enthusiastic about it they were punished one girl was punished by being made to run laps around this room completely naked with a chain around her neck and and be and be apologizing to R. Kelly saying, I'm sorry, Daddy, I'm sorry, Daddy, I should have been more enthusiastic, that kind of thing the whole time. I mean, classic course of control. They were not allowed to um, tell each other any personal details. They were not allowed to show off their figure. They had to wear sweatsuits. There was no talking to Uber drivers. If they did anything out of line, the other girls were encouraged to tell on them so they could be punished. They had to call him Daddy all the time, and he called them his babies. All of that stuff is disgusting, coercive control in my book. What do you think, Laura? Absolutely. I mean, this is absolutely what coercive control is about, the rules. You know, the rules set by that individual, the abuser, and then they have to live by those rules. And if there's any transgression, then there will be a a consequence and repercussion. And, you know, the, the way it's described of one of the young girls having to do laps, and it's that degradation Um, and trying to build uh, subservience in there, but also the fact that he doesn't want any of these girls forming relationships or bonds with each other. He wants to ensure that he creates the pyramid, that there's no relationship amongst them, but he is at the top of it, and he doesn't want them getting to know each other because those kinds of bonds or relationships mean that he could be in jeopardy. So he limits even their conversation that they can have, that they can talk about trivial sort of non-meaningful things like the weather and their nails, but they can't talk about personal details of who they are as people because that will humanize them and that will mean that they will have bonds between each other and he doesn't want that to happen. I mean, it just makes me really angry because this is sort of the the type of brainwashing that Don Hennessy talks about, which I absolutely agree with this kind of indoctrination, um, you know, and Professor Evan Stark, who we had on the pod talking about coercive control. And, you know, it's in plain sight that... Some of them don't see themselves as victims, of course, because they might think that they're getting what they want, which is his attention and the the chance for fame themselves. And it's these kind of forced promises where he's just keeping them all where he wants them for his own sexual needs. You know, he will wake them up and tell them to have sex with each other and tell them the style of how he wants them to have sex with each other. And as you said... Or with him, and if they don't do it enthusiastically enough or they don't look like they're into whatever role play he sets for them, then there's a punishment. I mean, this is no way to live. This isn't, you know, this is a breach of their human rights, full stop. And they may not even realize that. Well, that's been the big frustration for their families because of the women who currently now, as we speak, are under his spell. You know, the girls are now above the age of consent and they claim that there's nothing wrong and law enforcement cannot do anything about it. They've had welfare checks from the police where everything looks fine. And they, you know, they just the the police seems like their hands are tied. I mean, can you explain how there's any other 
recourse for them if the girls themselves are not complaining and but the parents you need a coercive do. control law i mean it very simply if you had the coercive control law then the legislation would be there and these cases i mean jim you weigh in because there may be other things in you know u.s state law that that could be looked at but these were exactly the sorts of cases and the types of behavior these rules and this governance and this micromanagement is exactly the reason why we brought the legislation in and so here they they we can prosecute cases like that 51 percent of victims don't know that it's a crime in its own right to start off with and you know once you talk to them about the detail of it and they're very clear practical points to prove you know there's very clear things here that show that this isn't someone's free their own free will this is a an indoctrination a brainwashing and the micromanagement and the rules and they think they're getting something out of it but this is no way to live at all this is complete exploitation of, of vulnerability right and Unfortunately, in the U.S., we don't have a coercive control law, so we can't do anything about that part of it. The only thing we can do something about is these girls who are under the age of 18 that he's having sex with, and depending on where they are, that might be 16. But if he is taking pictures of anybody under the age of 18 sexually that he's not married to, then, well, even if he is married to them, if he's taking pictures or videos of them, that is production of child pornography. That is a federal offense, and he can be prosecuted federally. So I would call on any federal prosecutor, any federal agent who, who in any of the agencies that, that investigates child pornography offenses to look into this because clearly he's done this before. He continues to do it. He will keep doing it. He will keep victimizing children. And as long as he gets away with it, that's going to be a poster child for every single other pedophile and, and producer of child pornography who wants to do this and will rationalize this kind of behavior. It's just disgusting to me that he can do this. But on top of that, what we can do is also go after him for actually having sex with girls under the age of consent in those particular states. Uh, he travels around, he has tours, he has sex with women while he's on these tours, probably girls who are under the legal age as well. And I think that somebody has to be have a very watchful eye on him and who he's with. And I think if enough of these girls and young ladies come forward, that there will be a ground swelling of support and people will actually go after him criminally. Um, in the meantime, we can hit him where his pocket is. And that is by not allowing anybody, not paying anybody who actually cooperates with him, who collaborates with him, who, who uses the songs that he writes or writes songs for him or performs with him or does um, tours with. None of those people should be supported at all because they need to know that their consent to what he's doing is actually harmful to women, it's harmful to children, and therefore harmful to everybody. You know, really well, sad. they're complicit in it, aren't they? They will be complicit in it, and someone's silence actually colludes with it. And this is about sexual coercion and vulnerability, and people do need to make a stand. And, you know, like, like you said, Jim, hit them where it hurts, which is in the purse, first of all. And, you know, the second part, if there are criminal offences here, then they should be looked at rigorously to see what offences there are when someone's praying. You know, this is child sexual exploitation, sexual coercion, coercive control, vulnerability. There's so many aspects to this and should be looking to shut him down on, on every front. And it can be done, but there has to be a will. And I think, you know, the public, there does seem to be quite a lot of public outrage about it. And it does seem that the tide has turned. And I really hope that people do um, have their voices heard here. Hold up, hold up. My daughter want to say something. I just want to say... What's your name? I'm sorry. Yes. My name's Jalen. I go by J, J -A -I. Um, I just want to say, Joycelyn, I love you so much. What R. Kelly has done to you, you nobody, nobody, I don't mean nobody, needs to go through what you've been through and what them other girls been through. I love my sister so much, and I just want to see her how she used to be. When Joycelyn left to go to college, everything changed after that. Everything. And it's all because of this monster, R. Kelly. 
He needs to get what he deserves, for real. Like, everybody knows that he is a pedophile, a rapist, everything. That's it. That's it, guys. But these parents, you know, they have gone to the police. I mean, that's that's what the reporting says. They have gone to the police. They have gone to the FBI. And sadly, now they just come straight to the reporters because that's the only way that it seems like anybody knows about the possible crimes that he's doing. Well, that's that's, what, that's why this circle. is in the news right now, because those parents went to Jim Rogatis and, and told him that this is still going on 16 years later after his original reporting in the Chicago Sun-Times. It's still going on, and he is the only one who's been able to get any attention on this, even though everybody in the music industry knows. I mean, of course they know, you know, yeah, just like they know so many other things. Re- we had the same with Jimmy Savile, and it took a long time. Police, some police forces knew what was going on. It took a long time to get that tipping point. I mean, sadly, he was dead by the time it all came to light. But the fact is, the groundswell does happen, that tipping point. And people do need to, you know, people in his inner circles who break allegiance and loyalty over time, they need to speak out. These are young girls. What if this was your daughter? You know, I'm not talking about those parents who are already coming forward, but those security guards and those individuals that are part of his inner circle, his lawyer, people who know on the inside what's going on here and that this is not right. This is criminal behavior. This is somebody who's praying, you know, at the very least, this is sexual coercion, taking videos and multiple sources have said that, that he takes videos, he takes pictures of these young girls, he records everything. So that that material and information is there somewhere. Well, and he, apparently he shows these videos to the men in his, his crew. So he is maybe by involving them in it, they feel like they can't speak out because then they're they're in they're trapped aiding and abet, well. aiding and abetting. Yeah. Well, well, that's how abusers also work: is entrap other people in it, and therefore you create the the kind of code of silence. But people do need to stand up and. Be counted on this one. This is a guy who shouldn't be working and we shouldn't be buying his records and records labels shouldn't be producing him. All right. So let's make a list and we'll post it on our Real Crime Profile feed and our Facebook page of all the artists and all the people that are collaborating with him and colluding with him on these horrific, horrific things that he's doing. You have to boycott them if you're going to hurt him. You have to boycott him as well as anybody who will work with him. We have to shut it down. We have to write letters to all the networks that might be showing him, allowing him onto their shows, all the venues that are, that are allowing him to tour at. I think we have to do that. We have to get together as a group and just pummel them with, with mail outing him for what he is, a coercive, controlling, child-molesting asshole. Manipulative narcissistic, entitled abuser. But also as parents, I mean, come on, we have to take some responsibility here and get the stars out of our eyes and stop allowing our children to be put in range of these people because a lot of parents think, oh, now I'm going to be with my kid this whole time and all these rumors about the celebrity aren't true and I'm going to be there in case anything bad happens. And that just does not happen. They are easily spirited away from their parents' control. And and sometimes the parents look the other way because they don't want to believe it. I mean, how many times have we seen this happen? And I don't want to mention the other celebrity who got away with this for a very, very long time before his death. You know, parents just, they want to help their children who they feel are talented and help them fast track to fame and and they just allow these stars to get their clutches around their precious children and and we just have to you know look at reality and stop allowing that access you know there's a call to action there and you know I think we've laid it on the line very clearly and we're obviously very angry about it but it is a call to action isn't it and people have got to put their you know get their voices get their voices heard but you've got to take action and we are start the ball rolling and you know there are journalists who are doing that too so it has to be that tipping point you create momentum and then you've got to keep pushing and I hope that law enforcement do look at him and look at him very closely and put him under the microscope to see what offences there are and what evidence there is, get the prosecutors involved early and try and problem solve it. Yeah. And, 
And when victims are brave enough to come forward to support them, to make them feel like they can speak out without public humiliation, you know, without backlash, without it's very I think it's very scary to come out and tell your truth when you're surrounded by such powerful people. And so we have to somehow create the space where they feel like they can. Yeah. Yeah. How do we do that? And I think we also need to create a situation like with Bill Cosby where when people come out, they get together, there's force in numbers. I'm sure that there are people within the statute of limitations who have been victimized by him, who uh, have been paid off by him, uh, who could still help um, bring him down because that's what needs to happen here. To bring him down and shut him down once and for all. That would be great. I want to thank the many listeners who wrote in and sent us links about this story that broke um, last week. Uh, thank you for that um, and you know, helping us jump on this topic right away. And thank you for listening to Real Crime Profile. If you like our podcast, there are a few things that you can do. You can take two minutes and go to Apple Podcast and leave us a five-star review. You can also check out all Real Crime Profile offers and promotion and our sponsors in our show notes. Another thing you can do is go over to Facebook and like our Facebook page. And one last thing is please tell all your friends, family and colleagues about us and spread the Real Crime Profile word. Thank you so much for listening to us. We really appreciate you. Real Crime Profile is produced and edited by Paul Francis Sullivan. Sound engineered by Terrell Parham. Music composed by Simba Zumba. Logo art by Jim Clementi. Real Crime Profile is produced by XG Productions and distributed by Wondery. For advice and support if you're experiencing stalking in the UK, you can contact Paladin National Stalking Advocacy Service on 0203 866 4107 or you can go on the website www.paladinservice.co.uk. If you're experiencing domestic violence, call the National Domestic Violence Helpline, free phone 0800 2000 247. In the US, if you're experiencing domestic abuse and need advice, safety, shelter or counselling, call Genesis, the 24-hour hotline, 214-946-4357 or go on their website, www.genesisshelter.org or the domestic violence hotline on 800-799-7233.